gastroparesis or gastroparesis, a severe form of that, and that can cause severe vomiting and nausea. Injectable drugs to reduce their body weight, and some say those drugs can have serious negative health effects. Well, while these drugs can help shed a few pounds, they do come with other risks and side effects. What if I told you that I used to be the biggest GLP skeptic out there? Whenever semaglutide or Ozempic or Rigovi, whatever you want to call it, came out on the market a couple years ago, I was the first person saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this another big pharmacy, right? Are they trying to push something on us that past the clinical trials, sure, but if we use it for a long period of time, it can be really uncomfortable, a lot of side effects, and ultimately really not worth the trouble. I remember I would consult a lot of potential clients and they would debate whether to do my program or whether to do the Ozempic. And I would always encourage them to do my program because you're going to need the fundamentals anyway, right? And we don't know what that drug will do. We don't know what the long-term effects are. We don't know if it will really work for you. So I, rightly so, was playing it safe because I didn't know. And if you don't know, you're right to be because we fear that which we don't know. Makes sense. But as you start to learn about something, your confidence increases and you become more open to trying it out. Just think about it. When you're in a crowd of people and you don't know them, you're shy, you're uncertain, you're anxious. But once you get to know people, you open up and you are a little bit more expressive. I knew nothing. So I was skeptical and rightly so because I was not aware of what the potential was with the drug. I never looked into the research, but when I did, some trials found that up to 60% of the weight that people lost came from lean body mass. So we're talking water, bone, muscle. How is that good? That's terrible for your metabolic health, but we need to look a little bit deeper. And I'll talk about that in a bit. So that was my first hesitation. That's why I would warn people off this quite a bit. But then I picked up a book from a physician scientist that I have learned to trust and respect quite a bit. I first got introduced to him back in 2020 when I moved to America. I was in grad school going to NYU, doing some research in the New York Genome Center. And here's this guy in this book called Deep Medicine, talking about the future of medicine and how it's going to be enabled quite a bit by AI. This is back in 2020. There was no ChatGPT. There was no Sam Altman, there was no XAI, Grok, Gemini, Claude, none of it. But here is this guy is talking about how close and how much we're on the brink of a medical revolution where AI is diagnosing better than most doctors on image analysis. You could literally type in symptoms that you're feeling and get more right than not prescription or recommendation for a drug. What AI is capable of from a medical standpoint today is ridiculous. And Dr. Eric Topol wrote about all of this back in 2020. Fast forward to the year of 2025, and I've consumed all of his books up to this point. Super Agers came out. I picked it up earlier this year, read it front to back multiple times. I can say that I was humbled. In one of the chapters here, Dr. Eric Topol talked at length about how impactful GLPs will be and are to this century of health. So impactful, I believe it's comparable to what antibiotics were to the 1900s. Before then, if you got an infection, that was basically a death sentence. But with penicillin and the other antibiotics that we were able to find, an infection is barely a nuisance for a couple days, if that much. What I love about Dr. Eric Topol is that he's extremely tied to the scientific method and he does not deviate from it. So when he does make a recommendation, it has gone through a lot of research and he does not put out something without having a high level of certainty that he is correct. And 
Thus far from all of his works, he has been more correct than not. So after I read his book and I heard how bullish he was on it, I said, you know what? I need to try this out myself. And in my program at the time, I have multiple clients who are on GLPs and they communicate that to me before they join the program and they have exceptional results while on the GLP and going through the exercise and nutrition coaching. Once I started doing it myself, my eyes were open and I became a full believer. Now I covered this story of my experience on peptides and my introduction to them at length in a previous video. I'll link that somewhere here. But in this video, I want to cover all of the popular peptides out there and pay it forward with the way that Dr. Eric Topol approaches science and let you know which ones have the highest level of evidence and the highest level of certainty in terms of them actually working. And then the ones that are so bad, we classify them or people call them peptides when they aren't even peptides at all. So let's start with the S tier. These have the highest level of efficacy. They're already FDA approved and fully accessible. First one is going to be semaglutide or Ozempic or Wigovi, the brand names. This is the name that everybody knows. It is the gold standard for diabetes and weight management. And it has results from clinical trials showing 15 to 20% reduction in weight. So high evidence. If you want to try a peptide, it's a good one to go with. Number two on the S tier list, which is a step above semaglutide, is terzepatide or Monjaro. This one is a dual action GLP-1 and GIP agonist. And in clinical trials, it is superior to semaglutide. So it has a 22% reduction in weight loss as compared to the 15 to 20% that semaglutide has. Below both semaglutide and terzepatide is liraglutide, which is like the baby sister. In clinical trials, it shows around 10% weight loss. And last on the S tier list is bremelanotide. This is approved for female sexual health function. The brand name is Bilisi. And while it is approved by the FDA for female sexual dysfunction to improve that, some folks experiment with it also for men. However, do note that this is approved and this is highly studied for women. Now let's talk A tier peptides. Tessa Morellin. This is approved for reducing visceral fat in HIV patients. Yes, HIV patients, a very specific population. But because it is targeted towards visceral fat, a lot of people use this peptide for reducing body fat in general. Number two on the A tier list is going to be a surprise to a lot of people, but retitrutide. The reason why I'm putting this on the A tier list is because it has not been approved by the FDA. However, the clinical trials are showing that it is more effective than semaglutide, terzepatide, and liratrutide for weight loss. And it acts via three receptor actions as compared to terzepatide, which is two, and then semaglutide, which is one. And the last A tier peptide is sermorelin. It boosts your growth hormone levels and helps with anti-aging. There are some clinical trials on this, but they're small and that's why they're in the A tier list. So let's go down to the B tier peptides. This means that they have moderate evidence. So small clinical trials, maybe some animal studies, some case data, but nothing strong, no big clinical trials or systemic reviews. The first one is gonna be a combo, it's CJC, 1295 with ipomorelin. This combination increases growth hormone levels that helps with fat loss and muscle gain. Number two on the B tier list is thymosin alpha one. This helps with your immune system, but it is regulated globally because people use it as a nootropic as well. And number three for the B tier, it's funny that it's making the list because everybody's putting it out there as a peptide, but it's not NAD. This is supposed to boost cellular energy, but there's no clinical trials saying that it does much really. So this is why I put it in the B tier list. All right, let's go with the C tier list. So these have very limited human evidence. They're not approved at all by the FDA or regulatory bodies, and they are only used in research or they should only be used in research. 
This one is going to surprise a lot of people. BPC-157. Everybody in the grandma is talking about BPC, how it's so great for these joints and how they take it and they feel like a million bucks after they completely tore a lim ligament or something like that. And I'm exaggerating, but BPC really has weak evidence in terms of anything that people are claiming. Everything is self-reported. Rat studies does show that it reduces inflammation and does help with recovery from injuries, but it has no human trials. However, it is banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. So that does say something. Maybe it is effective. Number two on the C tier list, always coupled in with BBC 157, is TB500. Again, animal studies mainly, and it helps with muscle repair and recovery. Again, this is banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. It is only to be used for research. This third one, another peptide that is not really a peptide, but everybody keeps calling it a peptide, Enclomphamine. This is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, and people use it to try to boost their testosterone levels. But I always like to say, if you want to boost your testosterone levels, just take testosterone bypass all the gimmicks, just do the thing. I digress. The reason why it's in C tier is because there's not a lot of evidence and the evidence is weak that it does what people claim or use it for actively. It is in that sense only to be for research. All right, so let's go down to the D tier. We're getting into the deep belly of the garbage. Melatonin 2. The reason I put this in a D tier is because people use it for sexual function. And for the white guys, they use it to get this tan without being in the sun. However, the reason why I put this in the D tier is because the cancer risk does exist. And again, it's not FDA approved and it's banned in a lot of countries. So I'm bringing that down all the way to D tier. Now let's talk F tier, the bottom of the barrel. Absolutely do not recommend. Don't waste your money. Don't even try it. Don't even think about it. MK67 or ibutamorin. This is supposed to be a growth hormone secretagogue, not a peptide by the way, and has side effects leading to insulin resistance. Not approved by the FDA, supposed to only be for research, but the risks of it are too high. And it's like, if you wanna drop body fat and build muscle, just, just do the thing. And then the last one I'm gonna touch on for F tier is IGF-1 LR3. There is some evidence for muscle growth in animal studies, but again, high risk on the cancer side. So I would not go anywhere near this. Do not waste your money. Do not try it. The risks do not outweigh the reward in any way, shape or form. So that sums it up. That is my ranking for all of the popular peptides and peptides out there. So if I were you, if I could give a recommendation, which and I am not giving any type of medical advice here at all, I would say stick with the S tier and the A tier. Always consult your doctor whenever making a decision around these types of supplements and medications. I hope this was helpful. If there's a popular peptide that you've heard of that you think I should dive deep on, feel free to drop that in the comments and maybe I'll do a video on that in the future.